Right, so what is the RICS code? And you see a couple of quotes up there. Um, I think the best analogy is that it is the highway code to property management. It is not necessarily law, but it is a number of best practices which, although not necessarily law in their own right, are considered by tribunals and courts as to whether a managing agent has acted in the resident's best interests or acted diligently in the way that they go about managing the development. At the bottom there I've put some definitions which um, are covered in the, the preface to the RICS code and they're quite important to take note of. Um, must means that actually, although it's a best practice in the RICS code, it also does fall under legislation and therefore is the law. Um, should means it's a best practice, but actually it isn't the law. And the other definition is reasonable, um, which I think it's easy to say, I know what reasonable means. Um, but just to specify it slightly more, it is a relevant community's judgment on how a typical person should behave. So, um, as an example, if you are uh, completely off the subject, but if you are at work at a building site, you might say that it's a reasonable way to behave, that everyone has a good laugh and swears at each other and everything else, but if you work in a courtroom, that would be an unreasonable behaviour. And similarly, that applies to developments. So, um, what would a reasonable service charge be at a development full of £3 million apartments, and what would one be at a development of £50,000 apartments? Clearly, they're going to be quite different scenarios uh, in terms of expenditure. So, uh, it's just worth bearing in mind that reasonable isn't necessarily what, what you might think it means. It's what that relevant community thinks is is an acceptable way to behave. Um, to the next slide. <clears throat> so, an awful lot of the residential management code is purely common sense. Um, they're things that you would expect a managing agent to do. Um, you would expect them to come and look at the development, you would expect them to ask you for some money, you would expect them to have the cleaning and the gardening done and all those sorts of things. But there are also, also some elements of it which are not necessarily what you would expect unless you've uh, sort of studied the code and, uh, or, or legislation that surrounds leasehold. Um, so just to go through them, um, uh, the ones that are up here, um, we should only provide services that correlate with the lease unless overridden by statute. And what that means is that within a lease, typically you will have sections of covenants um, that say certain services should be provided. Um, if the lease doesn't positively covenant that a certain service should be provided, then actually we struggle to provide that for you because what that's saying is that we can't recover the money to provide that service that falls outside of all the covenants in the lease. So. Let's say that the, uh, the lease makes a provision that uh, windows are the, the leaseholder's responsibility to clean and everyone at a development gets together and says, actually, we'd like window cleaning to be done communally. If the lease specifies that you know, that is a service that falls outside what we can provide, we can't collect service charges to do that for you because somebody could turn around and say, I'm not paying these service charges because you're you're providing things that aren't made provision for in the lease. Um, so it's important to look at the positive covenants that are within any lease as to what services can be provided by a managing agent or indeed a, a, managing com a management company. Um, services must not it should be unreasonably be withheld. Um, so what that means is that you're paying an amount of money in your service charges and let's say that uh, a number of people at the development don't pay their service charge or are late paying their service charges. It might be reasonable to say that we wouldn't redecorate the hallway, which is 
more towards a nice-to-have element than a necessity, but it would be entirely unreasonable for us to turn around and say, we're not going to insure your building because you've not paid your service charge. So essential services and important services must not be withheld, even if people have failed to, to pay service charges. Uh, a managing agent should regularly inspect a development. Um, and this is a slightly grey area in terms of how often that should be. Um, our approach would be that it should be at an absolute minimum frequency of once a month. Um, more complex developments should be weekly. Um, but there are agents out there that we're aware of who maybe turn up once a year. Um, is that a reasonable amount of frequency to inspect a development? You know, we feel that's not. Um, we feel that monthly is an absolute minimum requirement to make sure that the services that we're delivering on your behalf are delivered correctly, best value for money, and meet the quality that we're specifying those services should be delivered to. Um, we must ensure resident and staff safety. Um, so there's a whole array of health and safety regulations for fire risk assessments, um, for health and safety at work, for asbestos, for the list goes on and on and on, and they're things that we must do as a managing agent. So sometimes people will look at their service charge and say, oh, I'm paying out a lot of money here to have these health and safety reports done and to make sure that everything's safe and as it should be. That's something we have to do for you. We don't have a choice under this code or, or under legislation that we can ignore those things. Um, we should have a reasonable complaints procedure and adhere to it. Um, so we should have a written complaints procedure which escalates from um, you know, normally the person you would deal with on a day-to-day -day basis to line management to company directors and um, certainly as membership of bodies such as Armour or the uh, ARHM, the Association of Housing Retirement Managers, they will insist that managing agents are also members of an ombudsman. So once the, the complaints procedure is exhausted fully, you then have a completely independent body to go to um, to make sure that your complaint is dealt with absolutely impartially. Um, we should combat antisocial behaviour, but should not undertake the powers of authorities. Um, this is something which is, is commonly debated between managing agents and leaseholders in that you know, if you've got a particularly noisy neighbour who's playing their music at one o'clock in the morning or whatever the, the, the behaviour is, actually yes we should get involved, we should speak to that person, we should write to that person, we should um, try and do everything within our power to to make sure that antisocial behaviour is combated, but what we can't do is take on the powers of the police, of the environment agency, um, and sort of take that next step. What we can do is refer it to them. So those two things slightly uh, conflict each other, but they're a common area of, uh, of uncertainty. Um, we must consult under Section 20 for qualifying works and long-term qualifying agreements. Um, that is, in all honesty, almost a subject in its own right for, for discussion, but a long-term qualifying agreement is any contract that is entered into um, for the development which lasts for more than one year and costs more than £100, including any VAT element, per one apartment. So... Um, if you've got a block of 100 apartments and people pay service charges based on square footage and therefore the big penthouse apartment pays more than anyone else, actually if that one's paying more than £100, you have to consult for the whole building. A um, Qualifying works or major works um, are any works which incur in, in the same principle £250 including VAT per one apartment. Um, for those works. So if we've got a block of 10 apartments, then any works more than £2,500, assuming an equal split, would be qualifying works. The Section 20 consultation process um, is something which probably should be dealt with as a separate subject. Um, but essentially, it, it's coming to you as a group of residents to say, we need to undertake these works and you have a right to input into the way that, that those works are undertaken.
Um, we must recharge utilities in a reasonable manner and in line with Ofgem. So um, the same rules that apply to, um, to all of your energy suppliers, your electricity companies, water companies, gas companies, um, apply to us if there is a common supply of uh, let's say gas to a development and then it's submetered to each individual flat. We can't suddenly turn around and say, actually, we're going to stick a big charge on this and charge you twice what it costs us to get the gas in, in recharging that to you. Um, we should hold client monies in separate trustee status bank accounts at a recognised building society and those accounts, or bank even as well, uh, accounts should not become overdrawn and money should not be cross-lent. So, so the trustee status of bank accounts means that as your managing agent, when you pay your service charges, that just doesn't just sit in our account. That's not our money to do with us, we choose. That is your money in your name that's completely ring-fenced. Um, a recognised bank bank or building society is fairly self-explanatory, but it should be something that, that's a reputable place to store money, not not uh, sort of the, what was on the TV the other week, the Bank of, bank of Dave or something. <laughs> um, and accounts shouldn't be overdrawn. Um, if you haven't paid your service charges and there is no money in the pot, then we shouldn't carry on spending. Um, which does slightly conflict with what we said earlier about withholding um, services reasonably. But, you know, in those sorts of scenarios, there is, there is an interesting conflict and uh, there are different ways to handle that. But, um, but in, in theory, an account should never, ever become overdrawn and we should definitely not use somebody else's money to bolster an account because it's about to become overdrawn. So we can't go, OK, there's a development there with lots of money, let's pinch some money from their funds and borrow it for, ten, you know, for a month. Uh, it all sounds common sense, but it does happen. Um, and that's very much why these, uh, this code is in place.